this to me the other day. If these walls can talk, who do they have a lot to say? Because the, the interesting part, I've told many of you this, but I'm going to add a little twist to it, that when we first came back to my grandfather's house here, he's gone on with glory, to be with glory several years ago. This room looked completely different. It looked 1970s. And we had the shag rug, we had the whole deal, right? This was all brown paneling. I mean, we were, we were rocking the 70s. The only thing I was missing was my disco boots, you know? So this place looked completely different. This was white brick. Everything looked different. And I remember crying out to God and just, just, just me and God, it was like being in a cage. And I was like, I was like, Aah! I was angry. I was depressed. I was frustrated. I wanted to put my fist through that wall so many times. And I would, I would lay just totally flat on my face with nobody else around and just cry. And I would just scream at him. Like, what are you doing? And I put the blame on him. You took all this away from me. You did this to me. You removed this. You brought me down to this. It's your fault. But boy, oh boy, did I miss it. And I'll tell you something, guys. When you go through the storms of life, if you become, as Joyce Meyer once said, the victim, that's exactly how you're going to live. And dare I say to my fellow Millvillians that many people I see around here are victims. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're living the way they are. We have to change this city to live as victors. Amen. We've got to start with this church. We've got to start with this ministry. We've got to start getting it out there that people don't have to live the way they live. They can live with hope. They can live with a different mindset. They don't have to accept certain things. But I'll tell you something, guys. In this room, if, if God had showed it to me himself, I wouldn't have believed what's happening right now. Here I am in depression, anxiety, worry, anger, the emotional storm, right? It's just kicking up dust and dirt everywhere. And little did I know that years later, we would be doing church out of this, this room. Little did I know that if I had just seen it a little bit, maybe it would have changed my mind. But that wouldn't be faith at that point, would it? And here we are today. And who, who, who knew that a virus was going to cripple the world? And all that and, and everything that happened with it. So, storms strengthen us. Because without those storms that I had in that time period, I wouldn't be standing here today. I wouldn't be able to handle it. Storms invade your life and you don't know if you're going to make it or not. Storms are designed to create a deeper faith in God. If you don't have storms... How in the world are you going to have sunshine and grow? Mm -hmm. Right? Storms come with a purpose. Sometimes it's evil that's coming at us. And sometimes God will allow that evil to come at us because he wants us to depend on him. Storms can destroy you or develop you. Now remember, when you're quoting this stuff or you're sharing this stuff, I did not say this stuff, okay? I'm saying, I'm repeating it now, but I'm not going to get the, you know, Pastor Steve like next to it, okay? I want to make sure these guys get credit. Storms can build your strength, your wisdom, your knowledge, commitment, understanding, devotion, faith, peace, and joy in your life. That's why we don't have a ton of people right now. Because many people, not everybody, but many people, as soon as they started coming to our church, immediately they started feeling heat. Some of it was due to my wife and I, but some of it was also due to the spiritual heat of this place. Because this work is going to do amazing things. It already has, and it's just beginning. Amen. And with that, it takes a certain character to roll up your sleeves and actually dig into it and say, I'm not going to run from it. I'm going to go into it. Mm -hmm. Most people don't want that. That's not an easy New Year's resolution. Mm -hmm. We are so much better when we have weathered storms. When you can say, I've been through that storm, it's a different ball game. And there's so much more peace, joy, after you've been through it. Let's go to the next slide. This is going to keep rolling. 
seasons. There will be seasons for everything, storms included. There's times where the sun is out, there's not a cloud in the sky, everything looks wonderful, right? It's a great day. You know, Tamara's skipping around the yard like to like Snow White, and she's like, oh, you yeah, know, my wife too. And you know, and, and everything is, you know, the birds are coming at her and sitting on her hands and everything, oh, you know, and sticking up her legs and everything, and everything's great. And then storms are coming. He knows it. I'm pointing to the dog, not Tom, okay? I'm pointing to the dog because I know when it starts to, that we have a storm coming, that little chicken starts to literally turn chicken. Because. <laughs> He starts shaking, he hides, mm -hmm. he hides under my legs or he'll hide behind the chairs because he senses something's coming. Uh -huh. If we could do that in our spirit, but sometimes we still don't know what's coming. How do we handle it when we get hit by a two by four? You may be broke now, but it won't be forever. When it's raining or sunshine, God is in control. Amen. Seasons are always moving. And watch this. Never respond permanently to something temporary. Amen. That's a deep, deep Amen. word right there. Amen. Never respond permanently to something temporary. The decisions and how you respond to things can set the tempo for years to come of how you do things. <clears throat> Just remember that, guys. How you respond is the big deal. It's not what happens to you. It's how you respond yes. to it. Everyone has choices. Boy, oh boy, do we. And the choices we make can make or break a ministry. It can make or break your life. It can make or break other people's lives. And if we make the wrong choices and we do it over and over again, we can't blame God for that. Right. And don't make a cop out and blame Satan either. Because he can't force you to do it. You made the choice. He can tempt you, but he doesn't have that much control over you. God wants you to acknowledge the storm, but never allow it to overcome you. Call it out. Don't pretend it ain't there. Yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that right. Or this person's really on my nerves or whatever. Okay, that's an issue. Now, what are we going to do about it? We're going to pray over it. We're going to allow God to put into us, whether it's people around us or downloaded directly, a plan of what we need to do and how we need to work through that. Sometimes he may just say, be still and know that I am God. Don't do anything. Just let me handle this. And there's other times where he says, do this. Okay? There is a promise in the word of God that will match every storm you are going through. That's right. There is nothing in the word of God that it says, ah, that ain't in there. Mm. Nothing. Next slide, baby. Don't be surprised. Storms are natural. Stop being shocked that things are tough. Mm. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> because of the fact that they're going to happen. Look, even the weathermen get it wrong. <laughs> Looks like it's sunny today, and all of a sudden you're like, yeah. you're driving, and all of a sudden you see these dark clouds. It's like, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> the weatherman said it was supposed to be bright and sunny today. And all of a sudden we got this. Or how about we, you know, we're going to get snow, and all of a sudden there ain't no snow. Mm. There's nothing on the, on the ground. What's, nothing. So disappointing. Right? <laughs> 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 coffee and sit down yeah but <clears throat> but you know when a storm comes a blizzard where it's so bad that you can't see your you know your the, it's freezing to your face the winds are kicking up and yeah it's nice to have the snow but you're out in it and you're trying to shovel it's a pretty big deal or you get the traditional rainstorm the thunder and lightning and all of a sudden the house shakes and it's like whoa you know like you're not as in foundation as you think because all of a sudden the house shakes mm -hmm. You know, and he's again hiding under my legs. They're going to happen. There's no permanent hurricane, tsunami, or earthquake, if you notice. They don't last for like centuries. They come and they go. Now, they're devastating when they hit, but they don't last forever. Mm -mm. Your tsunami, your earthquake, and your hurricane won't last forever. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're going through right now will not last forever. Amen. Okay? What anchors you in these storms? 
Because if you're not anchored right, we're gonna, there's going to be scriptures at the, at the back of this that, that, that they, they literally pulled from. Yeah. <laughs> Storms are in, inevitable. Our anchor is immovable. The word of God anchors our storm. There you go. Mm -hmm. We have a weapon. Yeah. We have the anchor. Because God is omniscient, which means all-knowing. He knows where I am in the storm. God is omnipresent. Or God is with me wherever I am in this storm. Because God is omnipotent, God has the power to bring me through the storm. Mm -hmm. So let's let that sink in. Oh, go back one moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <coughs> he knows where I'm at in the storm. He knows my location. Mm -hmm. He's with me in it. And he has the power to bring me out of it. Yes. That's powerful. One, two, three, right there. That's amazing. So when you're in a storm, we have to go back to, he knows where I'm at. He didn't lose me. He didn't lose my GPS. Okay? He didn't go, oh, oh, I can't track Steve on my, my uh, you know, cell phone. Right? And then he's with me in this whole thing. And then he can bring me through it. That's powerful. We have to remember that all day long. Because when they come, what do we do? We forget. Oh, wait a minute. Transparent moment. That's just me. You guys are cool. Oh, no. I, 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 I'm the <laughs> one. Because I forget this sometimes, and I have to be reminded constantly. Because, you know, the goldfish has the, the memory of, like, what, five seconds or something? Yeah, that's me. Swim, swim. All right? So let's go to the next slide. Multiple squirrels. Multiple, yes. What is your legacy? The issue in life is not storms. But storms come to expose what you are built on. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, my goodness. The structure is what is important. That is 2020 right there. It exposed the church as a whole. Mm -hmm. It exposed our society. Mm -hmm. It exposed um, you know, sports and, and education. It exposed a whole bunch of stuff. And some people are like floundering through it right now. And some people, they're thriving in it. It's different. You are not remembered by what you avoided. You are remembered by what storm you weathered through. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Just let that sink in for a minute. You don't look at Wikipedia and say, wow, they weather, they, they didn't go through, they avoided that storm, that storm, that, no. You look for the people that went, yeah, uh, Winston Churchill, and, you know, Hitler is bombing England and basically blowing me off the face of the earth. But he gives the infamous speech and says, we will fight in, the, in, the, in the, the hills and the sands and the mm -hmm. sea. We will never, ever give up. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep, Theodore Roosevelt, or uh, Franklin. Franklin. He says, you know, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. That's a powerful statement right there. And he said, we will, we will win this. We will declare it. Right? A calm sea never produced a good sailor. You're on a boat. You're a boat of life. Okay? We're on the Rhea boat. You're married to Steve. <laughs> That's Rocky right there. Okay? So you're, you're trying to weather through all this. And the boat's getting capsized. It's, it's going, it almost feels like you're going all this way. It's like flipping over, right? And, and, and you, you somehow, some way, you know, through all the wisdom that you've learned over the years, you're, you're, you're instructing the crew to do this and do that. You're praying to God, and God, somehow, the storm stops. Somehow, it comes back. Somehow, you weather through it. And when the boat is, is actually right side up again, when people go up to you and go, how did you make it through your marriage like that? Mm. Well, let me just, just say, I was anchored. And I was anchored by God. Mm. And I had the weapons. I had the Holy Spirit in me. I had the Word of God. I had prayer. I had church. I had people around me. I was anchored. If you're not anchored, and many people aren't, the, the, here's the irony of this whole thing. For those who say, I don't need church, but yet they're the people that do life on their own. They don't need church. Oh, I don't need that. That's for weak people. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm weak. And then he made me strong. Amen. So, I have a support system. 
I have people around me. I have the Word of God. I have...